Hi, I'm Brittany Lung, and I would like to welcome you to this episode of Race Face Spotlight. Today, we're headed over to Mobile, Alabama, where we find 13-year-old Grant Thompson. Grant, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing pretty good, Brittany. How are you? Hey, I'm doing great. Thank you so much for joining us, Grant. Now, you've had a busy last couple of months that included attending the first annual Junior Late Model Challenge ca Camp in California and winning a track championship in the Pro Truck Series at Mobile International Speedway. Let's start with the track championship. That just took place last weekend. How does it feel to have a championship in that series? It felt really good, um, definitely to win my first ever full-size stock car championship. I've won plenty of go-kart and bandolero championships, but I mean, to win at my own track and a full-size stock car, it, it, it felt really, really good. You entered the race weekend with a 12-point lead. So did you have a race strategy heading into that race? Well, um, we definitely had to get a very good qualifying position because that would boost my points up a little bit. But um, we did not have to win the race to win the championship. So we were just planning to stay out of the chaos and just stay pretty consistent in that race. So the, the win was a, a, an added bonus. Now, I know you're... <laughs> yeah. An added bonus, but if, if we, I feel like if we wanted to go get the win, we could have, but... I didn't want to risk it. Sure. Now, you're relatively new to the Race Face program, so can you give the viewers a little background on your racing career? Well, when I was six years old, I started off in champ carts at um, Sunny South Raceway in Grand, Grand Bay, Alabama, and then I moved on to Bandoleros in about 2015. And that's when it all started, just trying to mainly keep moving up to the next level and then in 2017 I finished second in the nation all over the world and I, I thought that was just incredible to finish I mean I really wanted to finish first but we ended up finishing second and then 2018 was mainly our ending the Bangalore season starting the pro truck season and I did run a couple races in 2018 but it was mainly just to get out of the Bangaleros and then into the pro trucks just to get more seat time and learn more about the truck. Before we get into talking about the junior late model camp experience, what does Grant do when you're not racing? Well, when I'm not racing, I'm normally at home doing my school homework or I'm at the gym working out or I'm playing eye racing right here trying to get some more seat time at some different tracks or I'm out in the race car shop helping the guys out working on the pro truck. Hey Grant, can you tell us something that most people wouldn't know about yourself? Well, I like to collect die cast cars and I have a dirt bike that I like to ride a lot and it's very fun. <laughs> awesome. Your dad also raced late models. So what is it like being a second generation racer? Well, to follow up on my dad's footsteps, that was very cool. He definitely had a lot of success in late models, but also he raced pure stock modifieds and pro trucks, and he definitely had a, a ton of success in that. But, I mean, not really about my dad is what's really cool, but most of his friends that he's met through the racing world, they're helping me today. For instance, Bubba Gale and Kale Gale, they, they definitely helped me out a lot from when I started. That's wonderful that you get to benefit from those relationships. And obviously his, his his advice is probably very good to you when it comes to racing. Oh, it's very, very good to me. I mean, Bubba Gale, we, we, we kind of use him as the old school racing skills. And then we have Kale as the new school. And it, it's really good to have the best of both worlds in my racing career. Sure. Now, I know that you just mentioned Bubba Gale and Kale Gale. What has that experience meant to your racing career, getting to work with them? I, I just really enjoy it. Bubba's been good friends with us since I was little. He helped us out not only in pro trucks, but in bandoleros. And he's taught me a bunch of new racing skills, techniques, and he's definitely taught me a lot of how to work on a race car and, like, getting tires together and all that kind of stuff and kale 
I mean, he he's a he used to be a Camper World NASCAR Truck Series uh, winner, so it's, it's just very cool to have both of them helping me out at the same time. That's wonderful. Now, let's talk about the Junior Late Model Camp that was held at Madeira Speedway in September. Step one, you had to apply to the camp along with hundreds of other drivers from around the world. When it was announced that you made the top 50, what was your reaction? I thought it was first off crazy to just make the top 50 because, well, at first I didn't know that that many kids applied for it, but then once I found out, I was like, that's insane just to make the top 50 out of all of the kids that applied, that that was just so cool to me. A couple weeks later, you found out you had made the top 12 and that you would be attending the camp. Can you walk us through that moment? Well, we were at my house. We were all sitting in the living room. My whole family was there. And we were scrolling down to find the video and the thumbnail of the video had my name on there. So we were like, what? And we ended up watching the video and we found out that we were going to California, which I thought not only was an amazing experience to go up to California and Madeira, which I've been watching their series on Mad TV, but also just to go to California. I mean, a bunch of people live in California and just, I mean, we didn't just get to watch and do the whole camera, but we got to go see some trees and it was just, it was very cool just to go up to California. That's awesome. That sounds like a wonderful experience. Now with the camp, I know day one, you had to get to the camp and you had the opportunity to meet other drivers. What was that like? Well, first off, just to meet other drivers from around the nation, that was very cool. And to meet Eleanor Dickerson from another country, I think that was just very cool. I mean, her accent sounded really nice. (laughs) And just to meet (laughs) some other drivers that drove other race cars and to learn more about like what their racing career has been through, I just thought it was very, very cool just to meet them. It's my understanding that day one, you were in the group that was sitting in the seminars. Now, was that tough knowing that you would not be on the track that day? Well, I definitely wanted to be on the track, but it was definitely cool to learn everything that we learned about in the seminar. And we ended up hearing a couple cars cranking up and going on the track and running some laps. All like I was looking around at all of the kids in the seminar, they were all like, I really want to go out there and not only watch but drive the car and I was like, I do too. So I mean it was tough but it was very cool to learn about what we learned about in the seminar. The night before day two, were you nervous that you had never driven a full size late model? Well, I definitely had experience in a full size stock car. And I definitely was nervous for sure, but I was mainly excited to get into a late model, which I've never driven before. It's always cool to get into a race car that you've never driven before. Walk us through day two, knowing that you were the last driver to go on the track. Well, I mean, waiting all day, that was very hard for me because I, I watched a lot of kids go out there and practice and then just standing there watching them go around. I was like, I really want to get out there but it was very cool to learn about tires and chassis and all that kind of stuff. And it was just, I was like, I was waiting and waiting and waiting. And then when I got to go out there, that was the best part. I'm sure it was. Now you have 13 days before the announcement. How nerve wracking were those 13 days? Well, the first couple days, I wasn't really thinking about the camp. I was more focused on school. But with about three to four days before they announced the winner, I was like, if I win this, this is going to definitely add a big accomplishment to my racing career. But if I didn't win the competition, that was still an amazing experience. But I was definitely nervous waiting on to see who the winner was. But I was super excited to see who it was. You were at a football game the night of the announcement and had issues with cell phone reception and being able to view the results. What did you do? Well, I mean, all of us were trying to pull up our phones to try to get the video playing and they wanted our reaction. So my my mom was over there getting the video set up and me and my dad were trying to put up the video and we couldn't get it to come up. So we were just going crazy. Like, are we going to miss it? And we ended up 
going into the school campus and the school principal was nice enough to let us use her computer to watch the video and it, what, what I thought was crazy was it took us 46 minutes to watch an 18 minute video. <laughs> Sounds like you were pretty dedicated. You wanted to see those results. We're gonna take a minute to view your reaction. Okay, we're ready for the winner. One by one point, their name is right here, and I'm gonna pull this cover off, and you guys can read it. I don't have to announce it. Thank you, Mike Nake. We know you guys are tired up there and you've worked really hard. Thank you to the entire staff at Nate Clower Motorsports for helping us make this happen. I'd like to congratulate Grant Thompson. Phenomenal performance. You're a standout in all categories. How exciting is that? What was going through your mind at that instant? I was definitely shocked when he pulled the car cover off. I was just staring at the name. And when I saw my name, I was I'm just in shock and I turned around to my dad and he was just insane. He was going insane. It was just an amazing, definitely for sure an amazing experience. Not only to go back to California, but to work with Mike Nake and Tom Clower and the whole Nate Clower Motorsports racing team. Do you think it's all sunk in on how this will affect your career moving forward and the amount of exposure that the MAV TV show in November will give you? Well, I think it boosted my confidence to get us a sponsor and to try to find a new racing team that would help us out because when we applied for the Juliet Model Camp and if we won the camp, then with everything that MAV TV did, that would definitely get my name out there a little bit to definitely find a sponsor to sponsor us. Well, Grant, congratulations on winning the camp. You are getting ready to head to Madeira this week to get some practice in before the October 5th race. Are you looking forward to getting back in the car? I am definitely looking forward to get back in the car just to run some more laps. And I'm definitely excited to get to work with Mike Nate, Tom Clower, the whole Nate Clower Motorsports team. Wonderful. Grant, thanks for taking your time to share your amazing journey. Do you have any sponsors that you would like to give a shout out to? I would like to thank Go For Suspension for all they've done for us, Universal Precast, and Bama Boring for all of their support. Well, there you have it. What a great story from one of the rising young stars in motorsports. To learn more about Grant, check him out at grantthompsonracing.com. Follow him on social media. Don't forget, if you want to catch up on any of the Race Face Spotlight shows, you can do so at raceface.tv on demand. Until next time, I'm Brittany Lung. Thanks for watching.